Welcome back, what's going on? Today we're going to talk about Red Team Basics. We will talk about also the how our team engagements are conducted, what's the procedure. We also mentioned about the roles in the Red Team, some terminologies, and lastly we will take a simulation where we will apply the concepts we learned about Red Team in a near real scenario. It's near real, right? It's not that real, but it's um, it takes a real story. So let's first understand the difference between red team, pen testing, and vulnerability assessment. So at the very first, let's start with vulnerability assessment. So what is a vulnerability assessment? In a vulnerability assessment, we actually have a set of targets. So you have set of targets, say um, 15 hosts, right? So let's remove this one. So you have 15 hosts, okay? You scan all of them for vulnerabilities. Say you have found um, four, I'm not gonna say four, it's like a low number of vulnerabilities. Let's say I found 20 vulnerabilities in each of the, all of these hosts. Okay. Lastly, you will prepare a report. Okay. In this report, we will talk about these vulnerabilities and also we will talk about uh, what are the impact of these vulnerabilities. So you will mention the impact of these vulnerabilities. Are they exploitable or not? Are they exploitable? Exploitable. And also, you can, in the report, you can shed some lights on the priority of every one of these vulnerability. So say some of them are uh, high severity, some of them are low, some of them are medium. So you will give the team or your client an insight or insights uh, on how to approach these vulnerabilities with the correct patches, the correct security measures. Now, in vulnerability, that's vulnerability assessment. In pen testing, we do the same steps, okay? We scan the hosts, all right, in vulnerability assessments. We also uncover vulnerabilities. Before doing the report, we're gonna stop here. Before doing the report in pen testing, we try to exploit these vulnerabilities. So here we try to exploit, try to exploit them. The purpose of uh, trying to exploit the vulnerability is to provide something called a proof of concept, POC. So you provide proof of concept to your client that these vulnerabilities are exploitable, okay? And at the very end, you will create a report outlining the vulnerabilities you have found and how you have exploited each one of them. Now, how about red team? What's the difference between all red team and pen testing and vulnerability assessment? So basically, red team encompasses both vulnerability assessment and penetration testing. And it adds on that one so it doesn't it doesn't contradict pen testing and vulnerability assessment. In your team engagement, you may be conducting vulnerability assessment as part of the engagement, or you may be conducting pen testing as part of the engagement. Most most probably, you will conduct pen testing as part of the engagement when you do a red team uh, procedure or engagement. Uh, but but you, what what you add on this one is that you test you do some sort of tests. All right, you test the defense defensive measures defenses of the security team of the blue team let's say blue team so basically in addition to conducting a pen test and trying to exploit the vulnerabilities in red team we try to test the defenses of the blue team but how do we do that basically in red team the the, the uh the main difference between red team and pen testing is the fact that red team we try to be um, stealthy all right but in pen testing pen testing scans or pen testing engagements most probably are noisy so noisy means that we don't care about bypassing firewalls we don't care about ids we don't care about ips we just want to uh, uncover their vulnerabilities and try to exploit them. That's why in pen testing, when you do pen testing, when you have a scope of devices you are trying to pen test, the client adds you to the whitelist. So you create a whitelist, you whitelist your devices. Where? You whitelist your devices in the firewalls of your clients so that the firewalls won't pick up on your uh, exploitation attempts. But in red team, we do care about firewalls, we do care about IDSs, we do care about IPSs. Which means in red team, your devices 
is are not added to the firewalls whitelist so you will have to bypass these firewalls bypass that's one real big difference between red team and pen testing in red team we try to be as stealthy as possible in pen testing we don't care about this our scans most probably are noisy unless specified by the client that you have to bypass the firewalls or the intrusion detection systems but in general the procedure in pen testing we don't care about the firewalls and the intrusion detection systems unless specified by the client but normally it's, it doesn't specify if the client doesn't specify that it means you will have to ask them to add you to the whitelist uh, uh, create a whitelist and add it to the firewall add your devices in the whitelist so that firewalls won't block your attempts in red team the story is really different and that's one thing or that's one difference between red team and pen testing and what, is, what are the common factors between them additionally there is another difference between red team and pen testing the second difference is that in red team we test the physical security measures lock lock picking uh, biometric devices we try to bypass all of the physical security measures additionally in red team engagements we also conduct social engineering all right but in red in pen testing most probably most of the cases you won't conduct um, physical pen testing and you won't perform social engineering again again in some cases you will be performing social engineering as a standalone testing you will be sending phishing emails to uh, uh, employees and try to see who will click on the link and who will divulge their information but generally in pen, pen testing doesn't include physical doesn't include social engineering uh, attacks so which means we come to the third point in red team or in pen testing it actually does not mimic it's not real right it's not real in red team it mimics real attackers so it's it's closer to reality let me say closer to reality than what pen testing the last one is that in red team we mimic something called the apt advanced persistent threats in pen testing we don't mimic that we just want to scan the host uncover vulnerabilities and exploit them all we do care about in pen testing is to exploit right provide the proof of concept in red team we pick up we try to mimic the behavior of advanced persistent threats that's why we use a website called mitre.org in there we take a look at all of the advanced persistent threat groups and we take a look at their guess what the ttps so ttps as you know stand for tactics and then techniques and lastly oh not this one not the s it is the p so lastly procedure so in red team what do we do we take a look at advanced persistent threat groups all right we take a look at their tactics the, the, the techniques the procedures right and we try to mimic them in order to create a, re a scenario more closer to reality than only pen testing so now we talked about the difference between red team pen testing and vulnerability assessment let's now talk about the procedure and how it goes at the very first of any red team engagement we define or we set the goal so the goal most of the time is to test the capabilities of the blue team the blue team is the opposite of the red team they are responsible for the security and they're responsible for implementing the security measures in your team engagements the goal is to test these security measures next we define or we try to find out what is the sector of the target the sector of the target are they uh, in the are they finance institution are they government institution are they um, you know industrial control do they have industrial control systems so we define the sector of the target third or the third step we try to look at advanced 
persistent groups or as advanced persistent threat groups that have conducted similar attacks on this sector. So why do we do that? At the very end, red team engagements, the objective of red team engagement is always to mimic attackers' behavior. So when we take a look at advanced persistent threat groups who have conducted attacks on uh, companies in the same sector, we try to see their TTPs. TTPs. So TTPs or TTP stands for tactics, techniques, and procedure. So after we have set the goal and after we have set the sector of the target and we have also taken a look at the advanced persistence threat who have conducted similar attacks on uh, companies similar to the sector of companies that share the same sector of the targets and also we take a look at the TTPs we can select now we can go ahead and select a set of TTPs that belong to a specific group of of course advanced advanced persistent groups now one important one important uh, fact about red team engagement is that we do not uh, the blue team right they don't know about the engagement and that's why red team engagements are closer to reality than pen testing uh, yeah processes so in red team we do not inform the blue team about this yeah we have an agreement between you and the client but in pen testing you will inform the uh, system administrators you will inform the security team that you are doing penetration testing so they will add your device to the whitelist and files won't disrupt your work but in red team engagements blue team won't know about this which means we have to mimic what real attackers would do in the case of an attack All right, now let's talk about the red team roles. Let me remove these first. All right, so we drag this here. So what are the different roles in the red team? At the very first, we have what we call the team lead. The team lead is the person who plans and organizes the engagements at the very high level. So normally the red team lead they delegate the tasks with their assistants and with the operators. The next one we have on the list is the assistant. Assistant of the lead, of course. We can call it red team lead assistant and we can call it red team lead. Red team lead assistant, they provide assistance to the, of course, the red team lead in overseeing and conducting the engagement. And lastly, we have the operators. The operators are the guys who are doing the dirty work. So the operators, they take the plan from the lead and the assistance from the assistant and implement the, the plan as instructed. They actually execute assignments, right? Execute the assignments uh, delegated by the lead or the red team lead. Alright, now let's talk about some terminologies before we step into the simulation. There are some terminologies that you may encounter while you work in red team or if you want to work in the red team. The first the very first terminology is the call what we call the red cell. The red cell. So what is the red cell? The red cell is the component that makes up the red team itself. So it's the component that houses the red team. Next you have what we call the blue cell. The blue cell is the component that houses or contains the blue team, right? Straightforward. And the last one could be kind of weird or new. It's called the white cell. We can call it the white cell. We can call it as the referee of the engagement. What do they do? Since the blue team doesn't know about the engagement, white cell set the rules for the red cell in the engagement 
all right so they say what can be done and what can be done they agree on that at the very first of the engagement so it can be you can say that white cell serves as a referee between the red cell activities and the blue cell responses during an engagement they control the environment the network and they monitor the adherence of the red cell to what do we call it the roe so if you know if you don't know what is roe roe is the rules of the engagement it is a document set between you and the target at the very first of the engagement it contains the rules of the engagement the scope of the engagement and other details the white cell they use the rule of engagement and they try to establish um, some sort of ground rules so that red cell adheres to the roe document and at the, at the same time they try to serve as a referee between the red cell and the blue cell Keep in mind that the blue cell or the blue team, they don't know about the engagement. Great. So that was for the terminologies. Let's now step into the simulation and see a scenario where a red team engagement can be applied. All right, so let's now take a look at the simulation. I found the simulation in the room titled Red Team Fundamentals. You can find it in tryhackme.com. So to open the simulation, click on the view site and you can start the simulation here. So the objective of the simulation is to take you into uh, a journey or a trip where you can see how red team engagements are conducted. At the very first, as you can see, we start with the planning. We plan the engagement. We set the rules and we make sure that the blue team isn't usually informed at this stage of the exercise. As you can see, the objective is we want to analyze the, the natural response against an attacker. After the planning, we try to gather intelligence. So technically, the steps of the red team engagement, most of the time, they are aligned with what do we call the cyber kill chain. So there are many cyber kill chain models you can find on the internet. Most probably, they are all similar and contain the same steps. In red team engagements, we try to, while we're trying to mimic the attacker's behavior, we try to stick to the cyber kill chain and see what are the different steps an attacker can go through while they are doing the attack. So next, after, we, after the planning, we start intelligence gathering, or what do we call reconnaissance. Valuable information to gather about the target are the technologies in use, especially if they are a bank, do they use biometric systems, uh, do they use what kind of authentication systems are in place? The list of employees we can find on the social media photos. And as you can see here, threat intelligence sources are also used to check for APTs. We talked about this when we uh, talked about the engagement or how the engagement procedure uh, looks like or how it's conducted. Or when during the intelligence gathering, we try to find advanced persistent groups who conducted similar attacks on uh, the same sector of our target. Next, emulating TTP. We talked about this and we talked about once we selected an advanced persistent threat group, we see what, what are the TTPs and try to emulate it. So in this case, the TTP was to conduct a phishing, a phishing campaign. So in the scenario here, a phishing campaign or a phishing email has been sent to all of the employees but unfortunately, the blue team, they have detected the attempts and they have informed all of the employees about the phishing campaign uh, going on. But this wasn't enough. Unfortunately, as you can see, the phishing campaign was detected. The blue team was sent an email, but this still allowed the attack to carry on as there was no process to pl in place to check for possibly infected PCs. This makes sense. If the, bl if the blue team sent an email to all employees how the blue team would know that one of the employees or any of the employees did not click on the link in the email and install the malware so the blue team in addition to sending the campaign in addition to sending the alert or the warning they need to do an o a co comprehensive and overarching scan for all of the endpoints to make sure that none of the employees has clicked on the links in the phishing email and installed a malware unfortunately they didn't do that Next, as you can see, the red team has uh, 
established access to one of the endpoints and they found that the endpoint is vulnerable to print nightmare vulnerability which allows for privilege escalation so as you can see the red team was able to upload and run a modified mimikatz to extract local password that happened after the first foothold extract local password hashes including the local administrator account backups so now the red team has established access to one of the endpoints they run mimikatz and extracted uh, password hashes including the hashes for the account administrator called backups so now we are ready to lateral movement or network pivoting we scan we see what are the connected hosts to the compromised host and we try to pivot to them as you can see after doing some additional recon a workstation called dpa dc was identified using pass the hash pass the hash is an attack where you use the hash of uh, an account and try to access other workstations dpa pc was compromised and used as a pivot to connect to the db server so from the compromised host to the dpa pc and from dpa pc to db server using pass the hash of course while past the hash attempts triggered many alerts on login attempts from the user backups, Blue Team ignored them as they were confused with a batch backups process which runs monthly. Lastly, after the Red Team has demonstrated the attack successfully and mimicked a real case scenario or real attack, now it comes to the reporting and the analysis stage. So where they make, uh, you know, uh, meeting with the blue team and discuss the findings discuss what can be uh, done to prevent further attacks in the future so that is a very small um, similar scenario to what a red team engagement looks like and how it is conducted i hope you guys found this informative and helpful and definitely we will see you in the next video